Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Jeremy Hiltz at Hiltz Machine Works. And I am working today in my shop, and I need to make a custom piece of tooling for a job that I'm gonna be doing. And what I'm attempting to do is allow myself to hold horizontal milling cutters, in particularly uh, 16th inch width slotting or slitting saw, or other types of horizontal milling cutters in the quill of my bridge port without using the right angle head or any of that kind of stuff that they make for it. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to make a piece of tooling that goes into a one inch end mill holder. This is a one inch end mill holder here. And I've already done this for my criterion boring heads. What I've done is I've made an adapter to a criterion boring head that allows me to have a really nice fit in here and then get deep into holes without bumping the quill against whatever it is that I'm boring. So using that principle, I'm gonna make a shank that will go into the criterion boring bar, I mean, that'll go into the one inch end mill holder, excuse me, and that will allow this type of cutter, any kind of horizontal milling cutter with a one inch arbor diameter to go up. You can imagine instead of the criterion, you'd have this here instead, it will support the cutter just like on the horizontal mill arbor. And then on the other, the, what will be the lower side, I will have a spacer that goes up against it just like on a horizontal mill. And then a nut that can tighten to hold this. And this will be keyed to the shaft so that it can't turn. Maybe you can see here my plan. This is kind of a crude sketch that I just made. And so we're gonna have a two and a half inch long shank. That'll make it seat down completely inside of the one inch end mill cutter. I'm gonna turn that to like 999. So it maybe 9995 if I can hit that. And just have a really good fit inside the end mill holder. We're gonna come down and open this up a quarter of an inch on each side. So it'll be a half inch diameter to be a 1.5 inch diameter here to support that uh, milling cutter that you just saw. The milling cutter will slide over this one inch diameter, which is gonna have a one inch eight thread here with a small radius undercut there so I can easily stop the thread when I'm uh, single pointing it. And I'll be able to fit those cutters in here. Sixteenth of an inch is all they are. Some of them are a little bit wider, so I'm giving myself a little extra. I'm gonna have a quarter of an inch here of space. And I'm gonna turn out a three eighths inch wide collar that can also be one and a half inch diameter that will slide up over this. And then I'll have a nut here that will screw to support the milling cutter on both sides. And that's gonna let me have it in my bridge port mounted just like you see here. Except then I'll be able to have these go this way. I'm at one inch, 84 thousandths. I'm 
happy with that fitment. We're gonna go to the other side now. We've moved now from the Logan 6560 over to the Logan um, 922. I have a, usually I have my collet head on this lathe and um, I wanna do that because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna be taking this in and out to do some different operations on the milling machine using collet blocks and I wanna preserve the concentricity. So instead of having to dial it in every time with a four jaw chuck, I'm just gonna use the collets. So we, um, I've used um, Dykem to basically rough scribe some lines on here to give us an idea where we are. We're going to want to face off up until this first line. And what we're gonna do now is, cause we know we made the measurement correct here of uh, two and a half up to the shoulder here. I can now measure from that distance to get end up getting this to be a quarter of an inch. The overall length, when I'm done facing, should be an inch and an eighth, as you can see here. Hopefully you can see that with the lines. The lines are really gonna give me a good, good idea of where we are as we go forward. So, that being said, this machine does not have digital readout, so we're gonna be using some stops and some dial indicators as we go along the way. I'm gonna face this off. Um, up to this point, get the, the overall length of this correct. Then I'm going to center drill it and we're going to support it with the center while we do the turning operation and when we single point the threads. And this machine, you got to take lighter cuts because it's so small, it's a flat belt, 11 inch swing lathe, but it's a very, very nice machine, extremely accurate, and I've always been happy with it. I don't have the headstock cover, so we got to run it in a non-OSHA approved way. I don't have any employees here, so don't call on the OSHA. can't really push this little machine hard enough to get blue chips and carbide. It's really a high-speed steel lathe, but it does like the carbide insert. It makes it easier. Just can't get the recommended surface feet per minute and all that out of this little machine. I thought maybe it would be good for you to see the final cut. So what I'm done here, because we don't have any digital readout on this machine or whatever, I've mic'd this and I found that I have six thousands to take off to the final dimension. So what I'm doing is I'm using a Mighty Mag mount with a nice brown and sharp German-made indicator. Um, if you set one of these up, you gotta, you should really try to use best practice and not have the the probe, you know, at a at a steep angle or anything like that because you end up getting parallax errors and stuff. So have it nice and seated up against there, and I can unlock my carriage, and I'm gonna take off six thousandths. I'm at my six thousandths. I had to put the camera down for a moment. I'm gonna lock my carriage. And now I'll take the final facing cut and we'll be at final dimension. All right, now I'm at my, I've set my stop. I'm gonna set a stop momentarily. What I did was I moved over at half inch for the threaded portion, and I moved over an eighth of an inch for the undercut, and then a quarter of an inch for the key seat area where the um, cutter is gonna be able to sit in there. And you can see that I'm now up to my scribed line for my shoulder. I was gonna also mention, we didn't get the best finish on the shank. This is a, 1018 and it's really not the most desirable material to be making this out of but it's a piece that I had on hand I did polish it a little bit as we saw but could have done a little bit better there maybe next time I'm going to make three of these so I'm only showing you the first one but I'm going to make three 
with different widths of the key seat area so I can use a variety of different cutters. We're taking our finished cut to the one inch dimension. I'm gonna leave about half thousand left of polishing. Okay, I really like the uh, fitment I'm getting now. And I have a very slight taper on here so that it's easier to get it on. And then when it seats up against the air, I'm not feeling any play. Very nice fit. Now remember, we're going to have a key seat in here, which is we're going to do pretty soon in the Bridgeport with collet blocks. And next I'm going to put the undercut where I want it. And we're going to do the, a nice undercut there. We're going to go over to the bridge port. We're going to put the key seat in. We're going to flip it around, hold it on this side in the collet blocks and put the flats in for our end mill holder. Then we'll come back here. And the last thing we're going to do is single point the one inch eight thread onto there. So this is, this is coming along very good. I'm very happy with it. So what I've done now is I've, I have uh, laid out my undercut area and I just want to kind of rough this out with this tool first to get some of that tool pressure off the form tool that's going to come in here and uh, yeah I think that's a good idea to always try to relieve the pressure on the form tool. All right, I'm happy with that. Let's go to the bridge port. We're set up on the bridge port now, and the uh, part is in a collet block in the current vise. And we are going to go ahead and mill our key seat into this part. I'm gonna take several passes to do this. Key seat is finished. Got a couple of real crude scribe marks on here for the flats. Those, of course, aren't anything that needs to be super precision. I'm gonna load this up now again in the bridge port. We'll cut the flats. Then we're on our way to being done. All we gotta do is single point the uh, diameter here. Be ready to make our nut and put this bad boy together.
we are set up to finish this bad boy. I've got it in the lathe. I've got the layout on the diameter for the one inch eight thread. <clears throat> We're gonna go ahead and make our first pass and check it with the thread pitch gauge. If it's good, we're gonna rock and roll. Good to go. We're gonna turn out a little spacer, about a quarter of an inch long. We're gonna put a keyway in. Now for a final operation, this is a test fit. I'm gonna knock off 350 thousandths off of this nut in the milling machine. That's gonna do it and I'll have a nice tool I can use and we'll demonstrate it in a moment. Okay, so it's all done. Happy with how it turned out. And I'm gonna make two other ones. One, This one can take up to a quarter inch uh, horizontal end mill cutter. This one will be able to take up to a half an inch. And then I'm gonna have one that can take three quarters or one inch. So um, if you uh, enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Thank you.